Hey guys, Bill here. I don't know about you, but when I think about drones, I think about those military aircraft that we see chasing down bad guys on the news, right? Well, actually, as it turns out, and as I just learned, there's a lot more going on in the world of drones. At the Drones and Aerial Robots Conference in New York City not long ago, there were some demonstrations of drones that try very hard to mimic nature. So in the theme of biomimicry, uh, we now have for you Carthy, from SUNY Buffalo and Jeffrey from Sentai. Uh, In the early stages of development was a project at Harvard University called the RoboBees Project. Hello everyone, my name is Karthik and this is Jeff. Uh, I've been working for the past three years uh, on this project called RoboBees and the idea is to build robotic bees. The goal of this project is to recreate the unmatched elegance of bees in flight. So what I'm going to do is show you a bunch of videos. First one is the first sort of controlled flight of a animation of this set. They want to build a machine that is as good as a bee is at zipping from one flower to the next. They want it to be able to hover with great stability, just the same as a bee does over a flower. They also want to mimic the collective behavior and intelligence of a bee colony. In other words, they want to make these little devices fly in a swarm, just like bees do. And I can start telling more. But basically, we, we have a model which, which sort of mimics what Google does in its data center. So a style, being able to divide a big uh, act in smaller pieces at each Moving up to scale a little bit was Cameron Rose from UC Berkeley's Biomimetic Millisystems Lab. He gave a demonstration of a robotic bird called the H2 bird. On board, we have our custom-built electronics package, and it has a processor, a accelerometer, a gyroscope, and also, uh, it also has a radio that we're communicating uh, using this XP right here. It also has uh, two motor drivers, and so we have clapping wings, and also a servo-controlled elevator, and a tail propeller for yaw control. Like the RoboBees project, this project is focused on the accuracy provided by the recreation of nature. The H2 has a carbon fiber airframe and weighs only 13 grams. All right, now if you're like me, you're already asking yourself like, what is this stuff good for? I mean, what are you gonna use it for? Well, the scientists creating it have a whole list of applications that includes everything from traffic monitoring to search and rescue, even plant pollinization. But come on people, let's be realistic. With a worldwide revolution in robotic warfare already underway, and a keen desire for more accuracy in these machines, you don't think the military's not gonna take a big interest in this stuff? You see, the problem that we have today, especially in the war on terrorism, is accuracy. When we use a military drone to strike at terrorists, there's always the risk of killing innocent civilians nearby. We know this happens, we just don't know how often because the military really keeps those figures a secret. But what if these same agencies suddenly realized that they could send a swarm of killer bees into a crowded restaurant halfway around the world and kill just one person. Do you think they'd be interested in something like that? Now let me think. Um, I think they would. And that, my friends, brings me to the question of the day. Do you think drones are cool? Or are they dangerous and evil? Let me know what your opinion is in the comment section.